Hello students, this is Swati Deshpande teacher. Today I will be taking some doubts which few students had asked me in the comment section. So I am trying to solve their queries now. Okay, so let's begin. The first sum will appear on your screen. The length and the breadth of a rectangular room are 4 meter and 3 meter respectively. If this room is to be tiled with square tiles with side 40 centimeter, how many tiles will be required? Okay, first of all you should know this is a sum of area because we need to tile. Tiling is done inside the area of a hall or ground or whatever. So whenever we are concerned with the inside area, of course we need to find out the area. So let's do it, that uh, rectangular room. So we need to find out the area of room that is rectangular. So, length into breadth is a formula. They have given us the length as 4 meter and 3 meter breadth. So, 4 meter by 3 meter. I am not multiplying it, just leaving it like that. Now, what is the area of that square tile? That is 40 centimeter side into side. That is 40 centimeter by 40 centimeter. Right? Now how to find out number of tiles? Formula is area of room upon area of tile. Now area of room here you need to be very very careful with the units. On top there are meters. In the denominators, there are centimeters. So, we need to convert these meters into centimeters. So, 4 meter is 400 centimeter. 3 meter is 300 centimeter. This is 40 centimeter into 40 centimeter. Now, everything is centimeter. So, no need of writing meter, centimeter, nothing. All are centimeters now. Okay. So, let us start calculating. First zeros. Cancel the zeros. 4 ones are 4, 4 ones are 4. Then 4 ones are 4, 4 sevens are 28, then 2 out of 30, 28 we have used, so 2 are remaining, that 2 I am attaching this 0, so 2 0, 20, so 4 fives are 25, sorry, 4 fives are 20, so 75 tiles. This is the answer, very very easy, this sum is based on formula. Okay, let's go ahead. Next sum will appear on your screen. If two rectangles having length 13 cm and breadth 5 cm are joined at the breadth, what is the perimeter of new figure form? There are two rectangles like this, whose length is 13 and breadth is 5, right? So, there are two like that. Same identical rectangles, 13 and 5. Now, they are telling us to join this at the breadth. This is the breadth. So, let us join this. So, they will look like this. We are joining them here. So, this is 13. This is 13. This is 5. This is 13. This is 13. This is 5. And this is also 5. Now, they are telling us to find out the perimeter. Perimeter means nothing but the sum of all these sides. Please be careful, this side we are not going to take because that will be inside, only the outer border. So, perimeter of the new bigger rectangle formed is 13 plus 13, that is 26. Length will be 26, 13 plus 13, right? So, 2 times 26 and 2 times this 5, so 5 plus 5. So, 62 centimeter on meter it is centimeter. 62 centimeter is the answer. Very very easy. Here you need to use the formula 2 into L plus B or 2 times L plus 2 times B yeah, or sum of all the sides. Simplest of all. So answer is 62 centimeter. Isn't it easy? Okay, chalo aage badte hai bachche log, next sum will appear on your screen. The selling price of an article is double its cost price, what is the profit? 
students we know the formula cp plus profit is equal to sp right now here they are saying the selling price of an article is double its cost price so double we can take it as x or 100 whatever you want i am taking it as 100 if the cp is 100 sp is 200 why it is 200 because we are adding profit of 100 that's how it has gone up to 200. There is a profit of 100. So we can see what is their question. What is the profit? Profit is same as CP. See both these are same. So it is equal to CP. And when it is equal to CP, it is 100% profit. Because profit is always calculated on CP. CP is 100 and he is getting additional 100. Same as CP. So, two times. Right? So, it is 100% profit. 100 ki cheese hai or 100% profit pe bech raha hai wo 200. So, profit percent is 100% which is equal to CP. Very, very interesting. Chalo, aage batte hai. Next sum. Bhushan runs for practice daily 5 times around a square ground and completes 2 km. What is the length of one side of the ground? Students, whenever there is a sum about walking around the square garden or rectangular garden or ground or fencing around the ground or wiring around the ground like that, okay? Then it is a sum of perimeter. So here also we need to find out the perimeter. So let's go ahead. How much distance does it cover every day? 2 km by taking 5 rounds. By taking 5 rounds. Students remember 1 round 1 round is equal to perimeter. So if from this we can find out how much distance he can cover in one round that will give us perimeter. So let's do it. 2 kilometer is 2000 meter, right? So if I divide this 2000 by 5, that is 400. 400 meter, that is perimeter because that is equal to one round, right? This is 2000 meter is for 5 rounds. So, if I divide this 2000 by 5, I will get 400, which will give me one round, that is perimeter. Here I am writing one round. So, this is the perimeter of that square, square ground. What is the formula of a perimeter of a square ground? That is 4 into side, right? So, 4 into side is 400. So, side is what? Side is 400, this into multiplied by 4, it will be divided by 4. So, it is 100 meter. So, 100 meter is the side of that square ground. Very, very interesting, isn't it? Students, let's go ahead. Next sum also will appear on your screen. If 30% of pages were read on Monday, 2 upon 5 pages were read on Tuesday, then 72 pages were left to be read. How many pages does the book have? Students, first we will find out how many pages he has read. 30% means 30 upon 100 and 2 upon 5. Right? That is what they have said. So, let's add this. Unless and until denominators are equal, we cannot go ahead with the addition. So, I am removing this one zero. So, it is 3 upon 10 plus 2 upon 5. I need to make this 10. So into 2 into 2 on both the sides. So this is 3 upon 10 plus 4 upon 10. So now I can add 3 plus 4 upon 10 that is 7 upon 10. So 7 upon 10 of the book is already read. How much to be read? Itna baki hai? Obviously, 10 versus 7 ho gaya hai. So, 3 upon 10. 
that is equal to 72 pages they have said in the sum right 72 pages means what three parts this three parts equal to 72 therefore one part is equal to 72 upon 2 sorry 3 that is 24 pages and total is 10 so 10 parts is equal to 24 into 10 that is 240 that book has 240 pages see what have I done I have added whatever they have given how much they have read 7 upon 10 are here so 3 upon 10 yet to be read so that is equal to 72 pages they have said in the question right means this numerator is important this indicates the total 3 out of 10 parts means 72 means basically 3 parts is equal to 72 means one part unitary method I need to find out 10 total is 10 okay so 3 parts is 72 so one part is 72 upon 3 that is 24 if one part is 24 then 10 10 parts is how much 240 very very interesting right now many students have asked me teacher what do you mean by board mass so let's take one example of board mass Students, board mass means bracket of division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. Many times students feel that first we need to do the bracket, that is correct. Division should be performed first and then multiplication. No, division and multiplication are at same level. Please be careful here. They have written D first because we cannot write two letters at one place. So some letter has to be before and one has to be later but as far as the hierarchy is concerned they are at same level and addition and subtraction they are at same level then which one to perform first if division is first from this side you will perform division first if multiplication is there first you will solve that first similarly for addition and subtraction so I have taken one example of uh, board mass sum here so let's solve it as per Borma's rule, first we need to do whatever is there in the bracket. So obviously we will perform this first even though it is in the last. And in that also, inside bracket also, again we will see which one is first. See, even though plus is first, division and multiplication should be performed first. So I will have to do this first. In that also there is order. So let's copy it here. Now since we are in the learning process, we need to copy everything. At the time of examination, don't waste time, okay? 75 divided by 5 is 15. Then you will solve this. Baki sab vaisai. 2, now bracket and 2. So here it is multiplication, okay? So this is 25. Now, which operation we should perform first is this division because division and multiplication are at same level but division is first here so we will perform this first so this is 75 minus 5 into 5 plus 2 into 25 as it is then I will perform this because this multiplication is first and then this so this should be performed first 75 minus 25 plus 2 into 25 now this 75 minus 25 plus 50 then this plus minus are at same level so minus is first so we need to do subtraction first so 50 plus 50 last me 100 is the answer so here systematically you have to perform I have indicated which operation I have performed by this line so you study this again board mass is a very important rule Whenever multiple operations are involved, like plus b hai, minus b hai, multiplication hai, bracket hai, division hai, then you need to follow that. Board mass, bracket first, then division and multiplication. They are at same level, so whichever comes first from the left side, that you have to perform first. Okay? Division pehle, then multiplication always, no. 
If multiplication is first, we need to perform that first. If division is first, then you need to divide first. Okay. Same in case of plus and minus. Right? Okay. So word mass is very important. Let's go ahead. Students, next sum will appear on your screen. If the sum of 7 upon asterisk plus 9 upon asterisk is equivalent to 1, what same number should replace asterisk? Very easy. They have given like this. 7 upon asterisk plus 9 upon asterisk is equal to 1. Here I will give you a shortcut. Whenever there is 1 here and same number is going to appear here. Then your answer is very simple. 7 plus 9. Add the numerators. Whatever is the answer. Sum of the numerator that will be your answer. Why? We will recheck it. We will replace asterisk by 16. So it will look like this. So as the denominators are same, we can add numerators. So it is 16 upon 16, that is 1. Right? So whenever they give something like this, just add the numerators and whatever is the addition, that is your answer. Very, very easy shortcut. Right? Okay. Chalo, next sum will appear on your screen. For getting 3 as a sum, how many times will you add 6 upon 18 to 6 upon 18? See, here what they are saying, 6 upon 18 is already there. To that, how many times will you add 6 upon 18 to get 3 as the answer, right? This is the sum of fraction. You can absolutely solve it with the help of fractions. But here I am going to show you the trick, easy trick, shortcut. Right this way, 6 upon 18 is already there, so written first. How many times 6 upon 18 should be added to 6 upon 18? So I have written here to get 3. Same order which they have given in the sum. Start from the middle one and do 18 into 3. That is 54. Then do minus whatever is here. Numerator minus that. 54 minus 6 that is 48. Then divide, divide by 6, 48 divided by 6, that is 8, 8 is the answer. Very, very easy, start from the middle one and then multiply, like this is there in multiplication, right, slanting line. So multiply, then like this, subtraction, then division, your answer will be ready. See how can this be done with the help of fractions, when the numerator is 18, 3 means 54 upon 18. 18 into 3. That is 54. So how many times 6 upon 18 should be added to 6 upon 18? So how many 6 are there in 54? 54 divided by 6 is 9. But out of that 1 is already there. So minus 1. 8. This way also you can do. But I suggest this is an easy method. So you use this. Write the way they have given in the sum. Start from the middle one. Denominator. Multiply with this number 3, 2, whatever they will give you. Then minus the middle numerator and divide by the first numerator. Your answer will be ready. Very, very easy. Let's go ahead. Next sum will appear on your screen. Of the 5000 people in a village, 4800 are literate. What is the percentage of literacy of the village? Here how many total people are there? 5000. Out of that how many are literate? 4800, right? So, what is the percentage? If means total people are 100, then how many are literate? This is called as percentage out of 100. Okay? Cross multiplication, 100 into 4800 divided by this. This you can take it as 1. Question mark as 1. So 5000 into 1. Just remove the possible zeros here. And then divide by this 5. 96% is the answer. So basically we are finding out the percentage of this literacy, uh, literate people, that is literacy rate. Okay, sometimes they may ask you how many are illiterate. What is the percentage of 
people who are not able to read or write that is illiterate so you need to read the question properly okay students i have tried to cover most of the uh, difficulties or queries which students had asked me in case you have any other queries or in case i have not answered by mistake anybody's query then let me know again in the comment section i will definitely make another video for your doubts okay students i have made two more videos on doubts before so i suggest you see them also okay students with this we are through with this doubt solving session i will come with the next video very very soon till then what are you supposed to do study well and very important thing is yes enjoy studying bye